What is up, guys, and welcome back to the Blockware Intelligence YouTube channel. My name is Blake Davis, and this is episode two of Crypto Equity Investing 101. If you missed episode one, I highly recommend going back and checking that out. But this episode will be a little bit more in-depth, and it will be an introduction to charting. So please remember that none of the information in this series is investment advice. I'm not a certified financial advisor, and nobody should pursue any investment strategy without first conducting proper due diligence. So in case you missed episode one, we discussed a few different things, but first we discussed what is technical analysis. So we discussed that technical analysis is the study of uh, price action and trends that helps us to formulate investing decisions and manage risk. But more so, it's studying human psychology and also the laws of supply and demand, which are then displayed as price data on a price chart. We also discussed this idea that price is king. We discussed the fact that you can have the best fundamental story in the world, but if the price data isn't displaying that in the form of price increases, we are no better off as investors or traders. Uh, furthermore, with the human psychology idea, we discussed the idea that investing and trading by definition is very emotional, and the market will play with your emotions uh, and punish you for listening to your emotions too much. So what we do as technical analysts is try to formulate investing decisions based off of data that we see on a price chart instead of listening to our emotions uh, and potentially making emotional errors. So let's talk about charts. Why do we use charts? So there's a few different analogies that I like to use to explain this to people. Uh, the first of which is, you know, would you drive cross country without a map? So what a map does is it tells us where we've been and hopefully tells us where we're going. Uh, and this is the same idea with investing uh, using charts. So it tells us where we've been and you can use that information to find out where you're going. Another analogy I like to use is would you let a doctor perform surgery on you without first conducting any scans? You could pretend your doctor said, all right, we need to perform open heart surgery on you, but we haven't looked inside your body. We don't know what's wrong with you, but we're pretty sure that you need open heart surgery. And this is the same idea as investing without a price chart. If you don't know your internal health or the internal health of the stocks that you're looking at in the overall market, it can be really hard to make sound investment decisions, and chances are you're going to do more damage than good. So what can we learn from a price chart? Uh, there's a lot of things we can learn from a price chart. Most importantly, we're looking at supply and demand. So we're looking at buyers versus sellers to see who's in control and also to see what the overall trend is of the market. Also, we can look at a bunch of different indicators, which are, for the most part, a derivative of price, which is why we say price is king, because all the indicators in the world don't matter if price is not going up. Uh, we can also look at volume, uh, which we'll get into here in a little bit, and that kind of puts an emphasis on price moves. So now we can get into a little bit about candlesticks. So candlesticks are used on price charts to signify one period of price data. So that period could be one day, if you're looking at a daily chart, it could be one year, it could be one minute, but a candlestick is one period of price action. So why do we use candlesticks? Candlesticks provide us with four times as much data as a simple line chart. So if you use Apple charts or Robinhood, you're probably used to seeing line charts. And what they do is they plot just the closing price for that period. So if it's a daily chart, it's just gonna plot the closing price of one, uh, each day's price action. But what a candlestick does is it shows us the open price, the close price, the high and the low of the day. So you can see much more data in a quick and easy to read format uh, once you get a little bit more experience. So you can think of a candlestick as a game of tug of war. So it's a, this battle that goes on each day between buyers and sellers. And a candlestick allows us to see who is in the lead at different points of the day and also who ended up winning that game of tug of war. So if you look at a candlestick and turn it sideways, you can kind of think about this you know, buyers are on the left, sellers are on the right, and we're tugging back and forth. And the candlestick shows us, you know, all of this information about this battle that went on that day. So on the right hand side there, you can see two example candlesticks. Uh, one is a bullish candlestick in green there, uh, which would be an indication that price was up that day. Um, just assuming these are one day candlesticks. And on the right hand side there, you can see a red bearish candlestick, which would indicate that price was down that day. So in the middle of the candlestick there, you can see this rectangle, this uh, you know, fatter rectangle, and that is what we call the body of the candlestick. And that gives us two data points, the open and close price. So on that green bullish candlestick, you can see that uh, if price was increasing, that would mean that the closing price was higher than the open price. So the open is at the bottom of the body and the close is at the top of the body. 
and it's the opposite for a bearish candlestick, right? If price is down that day, the close was lower than the open. So the open price is at the top of the body and the close is at the bottom of the body. You can also see the wicks of the candle, which are those lines that are coming off the top and bottom of the body. And what those do is they show us the high and low prices of the day. They're not exactly where price was opening at or closing at, but price reached that point at one part of the day. To explain it a little bit better, I drew this picture on the left-hand side there. Um, you could pretend that that line, squiggly line there, is an intraday chart, right? That was the price action over the course of one day. And then you can see how that data is condensed down into one candlestick there on the right. So now we can talk a little bit about candlestick patterns. Um, before we start, I think it should be uh, explained that candlestick patterns don't have a ton of weight. Um, you know, what I mean by that is individual, you know, one or two candlestick patterns. What really matters is the trend of the overall market and the trend of the stock. So what a candlestick pattern can do is it can signal when maybe the stock's, you know, getting ready to make a big move up, or it can signal when maybe the stock's tired and it needs to rest. So in the end, individual candlestick patterns don't have too much weight, but it is important to understand what individual candles look like and what that could potentially mean in terms of the buying and selling that took place that day. So the first of the single candlestick patterns we can see is on the left hand side here and that's what we'd call an upside reversal uh, or you also might hear it called a hammer what this shows is day where price was up but if you think about it in terms of the tug of war game you might say that this was a day where the buyers had to work pretty hard in order to get the lead um, so what you can see here is a massive wick to the downside compared to the open and close price so what happens was at one point in the day, sellers were in control and price was down a fair amount um, until buyers decided, hey, prices are low enough that we're looking to step in and they overpowered the sellers uh, in order to make the stock close green for the day. So this is a signal of strength in a stock. And it also could be an indication that we're likely to see prices also increasing in the near future. In the middle there, you can see the opposite of an upside reversal, which is what we call a downside reversal or also known as a shooting star. So as I said, this is the opposite of an upside reversal. So this was a day where prices were increasing at some point in the day um, to a fairly large degree. And at some point, prices were high enough that sellers decided, hey, I'd like to get out here. And the sellers overpowered the buyers uh, to the point where the stock reversed all the way down to close red for the day. So this is an indication that the buyers have gotten tired and sellers have overpowered them, which would mean that we would likely see continued selling in the near future. Now on the right hand side there, you can see a doji candle, which is uh, a trendless candle. And what this means is that buyers and sellers are almost at a stalemate and that no one's in clear control of the stock. This can mean a few things, but most likely it means that the buyers and sellers, this battle that's going on between them has intensified to the point where no one can really gain clear control of the stock. So the doji candle is what's considered a neutral pattern. Um, and a lot of times it could signal, you know, a bottom or top, a trend change as this battle is intensifying and someone is likely to take the lead uh, in the near future. But as I mentioned before, these single candlestick patterns don't have too much emphasis um, in the overall scope of the stock that we're looking at. So what I mean by that is every time you see an upside reversal, it doesn't mean that the stock's about a rip for the next week or, you know, same with the downside reversal. It doesn't mean that, you know, the world is ending and that the price is about to bust all the way open. Um, and the doji candle doesn't mean that, you know, the trend is totally going to change. These are just single candlestick patterns. And what they do is they give us hints at what might be happening, you know, under the hood of the stock. Um, but they, they're never guaranteed. So now we can move on to a little bit more in-depth candlestick patterns. And these are two candlestick patterns. Um, on the left side there, you can see the first one, which is called a bullish inside day. So this is a two-day pattern where on the first day, there's a substantial price increase. And then on the following day, the range of that second candle is inside the range of the first candle. So what I mean by that is on day two, the high is lower than the first day's high and day two's low is higher than day one's low. So that candle is inside the range of the first day. And what this signals to us is continuation, but also consolidation. So this is a signal that prices are likely to continue to the upside, but today they're just consolidating. So we can think of stocks as like humans. So if we want to jump up, we got to squat down first. So when stocks make big moves to the upside, they have to squat down a little bit. They have to consolidate their gains before they continue to the upside. 
So the bullish inside day is a signal that the stock is just consolidating its gain and it's more likely to continue to the upside than it is to continue lower. The next candlestick pattern is the opposite of a bullish inside day. It's a bearish inside day. So that's signified by a day where the first day was a substantial price decrease followed by a day that's inside the range of that first day. So this means the same thing as the bullish inside day in that we're seeing consolidation before continuation, except now instead of prices more likely to increase to the upside, it's most likely that sellers will regain control in the future and prices will continue to fall. So now in the middle right there, you can see what's called an engulfing bar. Now this is the opposite of an inside day. So on an inside day, the range of day two is inside that of day one. Now the range of day two is outside that of day one. So the high of day two is higher than the high of day one, and the low of day two is lower than the low of day one. Now this is a signal of a potential trend change here. So this is also a upside reversal candle there on day two. So what you can see is what happened is, you know, there was selling on day one and continued selling earlier in the day in day two. But at some point, a bunch of buyers stepped in and prices ended up increasing. And we, we would most likely see that prices will increase in the future. So now the opposite of a bullish engulfing candle would be a bearish engulfing candle. And you would most likely see this at a top. So prices have been increasing before there's this bearish candle that signifies the trend reversal. So on a bearish engulfing candle, price tried to break out over the high of the previous day, but was ultimately cut short when a bunch of sellers stepped in to reverse the candle even lower than the prior day's low. So what we'd expect to see after a bearish engulfing candle is most likely lower prices. So now that we've talked a little bit about price action, we can talk about the second most important indicator, which is volume. And volume is the number of shares that were traded during that time period. So if you're brand new to the stock market, you can think about individual stocks or these companies as pizzas. And by agreeing to go public, you are agreeing to split up part of your company into a million different little pieces that can then be bought or sold on the stock exchanges. So what this does is this allows you to raise money that you can then invest into growing your business. So volume is the amount of those pieces or shares that were traded for that stock on that day or week or you know minute. So as I mentioned, volume is number two behind price, right? Because price is what makes us money. You don't make money by more volume coming into the stock. You make money by volume coming into the stock to buy it and price increasing. So what volume does is it adds emphasis to price movements. It tells us the amount of participants in the game of tug of war that day. So if there was a strong price movement and volume was up a bunch that day, you can see that that game of tug of war was much more important than previous days where maybe there weren't that many people involved. So as technical analysts, we're looking to follow the massive institutions that can really drive a stock's price, you know, on a multi-month or multi-week move because institutions are the people in the market that are, you know, moving around billions of dollars. And if they're going to accumulate a stock over the course of, you know, a few weeks or months, that's going to increase price by a lot. So there's this saying that, you know, no matter... How slow an elephant gets in a tub, the water level is going to rise, right? So no matter how slow an institution moves, you know, 100 million, a billion, 10 billion, whatever into a stock, price is going to rise. And we're going to be able to see that through volume. Um, and the volume is going to show us, you know, that there's these massive players building up positions with tons of volume. There's also the saying that there isn't, you know, this isn't your Aunt Sally buying. So when you see price increasing on, you know, massive volume, that isn't, your Aunt Sally adding to her Roth IRA, that is, you know, Fidelity adding, you know, a $1 billion position into their portfolio. So we really want to follow the institutions because they're the ones who are going to drive price movements over a prolonged period of time. And we follow the institutions by looking at volume. So on the right hand side there, you can see an example of a stock breaking out. This was Tesla in August of 2020, which went on a roughly 80% run in about three weeks. So this chart there shows us five weeks of time uh, on a daily chart. And as you can see, when the stock first started to really you know, break out of that consolidation, volume really started to pour into the upside. You see those big green volume bars. Um, Jim Ruppel calls these skyscrapers of green. And that's really what we're looking for, these massive skyscrapers that signal institutional accumulation. So from the start there, the stock had you know, massive volume, volume coming into the upside. And that was an early indication that this move is likely to be sustained for some time. So clearly in this example, 
massive volume pouring into the upside was a key indication that price was likely to increase and that institutions were accumulating Tesla at the time as it went on an 80% run in about three weeks. So now I'm going to walk through one more historical example of how you can see price action and volume playing out in real time. So this is Silvergate Capital, whose ticker is SI. Um, and SI went on this 140% or so move uh, in only a couple months in late 2021. So as you can see here, there's this you know pretty long consolidation period from May to September before SI makes this move. So like I said, stocks like to bend down before they jump up. So the longer the consolidation generally means the bigger the move up. So as you can see on this last trough before making this run, there's this doji candle right at the bottom. Um, this was you know fairly light volume you can see here, but it was a signal of a potential trend change. So it's definitely something I would have been keeping my eye on. And then a few days later, you see this upside reversal candle, uh, also on lighter volume. So nothing to be too confident about quite yet, but it is something that, you know, it would definitely pique your interest uh, and you'd want to keep your eye on. But what really happens is, you know, here, October 1st is the day that we move over these consolidation highs, uh, you know, roughly in this range. You see prices moving through those highs and volumes, you know, there's an uptick in volume this day. It's the biggest volume day in, you know, maybe almost a month. Um, and, you know, as SI continues higher to break out, you see volume just exploding, volumes rising every single day. So that's institutions building massive positions in SI, uh, which fuels this move even higher. So now you see on this day, before we start to consolidate some more, uh, before the last leg up, uh, you see this downside reversal day. So prices tried to break out over these highs and sellers said, you know, we're, we're ready to step in here. We'd like to sell. So there's this downside reversal this day, which kind of fuels this uh, consolidation move. Uh, but as you can see, volume drops off here. So you know, look at this decrease in volume, which tells us that there's no real sellers here. There's some obviously some selling going on, but nothing too major, nothing like we'll see at the end of the run. Um, you know, this day, so this is a gap down. We could talk about this later, but basically um, the market is open pre-market. So um, on this day, they reported earnings after the close. So by the time that the market opened the next day, uh, price had fallen. So it gapped down. Uh, you see this gap right here. So this was an earning. This was because of earnings. So investors were a little upset with how SI's uh, earnings were doing. But as you can see, they immediately started to fill that gap. Um, you know, people were still demanding shares. And there was this volume drop off here until this massive, you know, 22% almost candle, which, you know, f starts this last leg up. But as you can see, you know, there's this massive uptick in volume on this day. So this is a sign that, you know, institutions are still accumulating shares. Um, but as you can see on these last, you know, two peak days, volume drops off. So as you can see over here, we start to consolidate some more, but this turns into some really messy uh, and choppy price action. So a lot of people would have gotten chopped up here if you made you know big gains in here and here. Chances are, if you weren't careful, you could have lost all of that in here. So now up here, there's a lot of signals that SI is probably tired and this run is probably coming close to an end. So you can see here we have a inside candle. So this day, November 8th, is an inside candle from the previous day, which was a Friday, November 5th. This was a bearish inside day. As you can see, price is down um, the, ne the, the previous day. Um, and then the following day on November 9th, you see this bearish engulfing candle. So that was you know, a real signal that, hey, SI is probably tired and we should be looking to exit this position. Um, then this following day, obviously, um, doesn't look great either, down 7%. So then you kind of chop around on here, uh, fairly light volume. But then you see this massive bearish engulfing day here on November 22nd, price is down 11%. And look at this uptick in volume there. So that's a sign that people are starting to dump their positions uh, until finally you have this downside reversal day, uh, which signals basically the, that the run is over. And as you can see, SI uh, still hasn't recovered. Um, you can also see you know, some of this red volume pouring in through these four down days when we break these consolidation lows here on December 3rd, you see this massive uptick in volume. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like, comment some feedback or something that you'd like to see covered in future videos.